Well, good morning, campers, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Camp Cryptid. I am your host, Erica Fett, and today I am super excited to get into another cryptid. But first, I would like to thank everyone so much for hanging out for last week's episode on some of Mexico's coolest cryptids and urban legends and some haunted places that I absolutely have to go to next time I'm visiting there. I'm so happy that so many of you reached out with more urban legends and haunted places since that episode. So I'm definitely, definitely going to do a part two of Mexico's cryptids and urban legends in the future. But today I wanted to talk about one of my absolute favorite cryptids that I didn't discover until I started doing all of my Bigfoot or Ohio Grassman research, the Crosswick Monster. My favorite thing about starting this podcast was doing my own research on cryptids, and there are so many that I knew about, but I'm learning new ones every single day, and it's my favorite thing ever. Now, the Crosswick Monster was one I came across uh, that made me pumped, not only because the sighting was an hour away from where I live in Ohio, but because it totally has me mystified as to what the heck it could have been. Plus, I have totally been on a lizard and reptile kick thanks to all of the Godzilla goodness lately. And so talking about this slimy cryptid totally just makes my day. Disclaimer today, uh, my dog Theo, who is a senior dog, he's 14 years old, (laughs) is currently snoring in my office. So if you hear him snoring, (laughs) I'm just going to let him sleep because he's so precious and um, he's an old man. So we just got to let him, you know, get his little rest. So, yeah, just a disclaimer if you heard any snoring. (laughs) So, the story of the Crosswick Monster happened around what is present-day Waynesville, Ohio, which is also where the Ohio Renaissance Festival also takes place. Uh, So, double awesome, right? But not only is this area home to an amazing festival, it also is shrouded in some mystery with the lost world of Fort Ancient and its prehistoric mounds. So, throwing a cryptid in the mix just seems like a good time, right? So the original sighting of this cryptid, also known as the Waynesville Monster, was back in the 1800s when Waynesville was known as a little town called Crosswick. And Ohio is full of marshes and wetlands, and this area was definitely one of them. Now, this little town had numerous people spotting strange tracks around the village, and many stories started to circulate around the town. And while people shared stories of seeing a creature, no one knew for sure what was really going on in that area. But one day, two boys ages 11 and 13 were out fishing when they heard some strange noises coming from behind them. They were paralyzed in fear when they turned to see a large snake-like monster charging towards them with its two forearms outstretched ready to grab them. Now, as the monster rushed towards them, they tried to scream and run, but the monster grabbed one of the boys and took off dragging the boy almost a hundred yards away to a giant hollowed out sycamore tree. Now, while this was happening, some locals were also in the area and heard the boy's screams and ran to the scene. When they arrived at the hollowed tree, the snake-like creature had its giant fangs out ready to eat the boy as its next meal. However, as the man ran up, it startled the monster, caused it to drop the child to the ground. So they grabbed the boy and immediately rushed him to the doctor in town. They told all of the locals the story of the monster and rallied over 60 people armed with weapons and surrounded themselves with dogs to track the monster down. But the locals were definitely not prepared for what they were about to encounter. As they ventured to the hollowed sycamore tree to capture this beast, they started to chop the tree down. Within the first few chops, the creature darted out of the hollowed tree, leaving the locals standing in fear. Standing before them was a large snake-like creature on two legs with two arms standing upright at 12 to 14 feet tall. Those that were there said the creature was about 30 feet long with its tail, and its limbs were around 4 feet long each. The entire body was about 16 inches in diameter, and the monster's entire body was covered in scales. Witnesses said it had a dark black forked tongue inside of its blood-red mouth, and its feet resembled that of a salamander, but were about a foot long each. Now, according to witnesses there, the creature stood on its hind legs and raced off with the speed of a horse. Half of the group decided to chase this monster down, and the other half was way too startled and terrified of what they just saw to continue on. Now, as the remainder of the group went chasing up the hill to find the creature, it escaped through some caves, never to be seen by the locals again. So the story of the Crossic Monster was published, and everyone involved was bewildered as to what type of monster that evaded them. 
The fear of this monster lurking around that area haunted this little town. And now this story from the 1800s is a legend in the area. And no one really knows what the Crosswick monster was or what happened to it. So when it comes to the Crosswick monster, what could it be, right? Was it a prehistoric dinosaur-like creature? Some local papers in the, I think the 1950s, alluded to it being an Allosaurus. Now, some people also said, okay, well, if it's a, a large lizard, could it have been a Komodo dragon? Now, some people also thought the story of the Crosswick monster could have been a hoax. However, if it was a hoax, over 60 people in this town saw this creature. And you think that if someone was making stuff up, they would have said something, right? When the original story came out in the papers, there were lots of people's names dropped in it. And a lot of people said that they would have no problem going on to further elaborate what they saw that day. So to me, it sounds like if you could get 60 people in on the same story, well, good for you. You found you found your crew, right? But to me, it doesn't seem likely that it would have been a hoax. We know that dinosaur fossils were being found by that time period. And we know that people thought that there could have been large giant lizards walking the earth at one point. Uh, but to be able to describe this exact creature is pretty crazy, right? Even finding the fossils, I don't really think that they knew exactly what it looked like. But to be able to say, you know, this is exactly what all of these 60 people saw and they all corroborate the same story, uh, that sounds a little, you know, not like a hoax to me. But, you know, I'm a believer, right? So to me, it does sound like maybe it was a large prehistoric creature. Or could it be that this area is just a hub for strange cryptid activities? This area was once the Shaker Swamp area with hundreds of acres of marshes, wetlands, and it had decaying trees and very diverse wildlife. In fact, this area is close to where the Loveland Frogman sightings were. That is basically sightings that happened in the 1950s where a businessman traveling said that he saw three giant frogs standing upright huddled in a group talking, <laughs> which I love. I would love to see a giant talking frog first off. Um, that's my favorite thing ever. And not only are the Loveland Frogman sightings close to this area, there's even a giant snake mound called the Great Serpent Mound that is less than 60 miles away from this area. You've got this area that is just a hub for reptiles and, and amphibians, and I just, I love it, right? And I mentioned earlier about Fort Ancient, and Fort Ancient is a prehistoric area where there's prehistoric mounds here in Ohio. So there is a lot of mystery around this area. So I think it's very cool that there was also this monster sighting in the late 1800s of the Crosswick monster. And then you add in the Loveland Frogman sightings almost 70 years later. And then you've also got this giant serpent mound that is like insanely huge here in Ohio. And there are mounds all over Ohio, by the way. There's actually one probably not too far from my house. And the fact that there could be creatures that existed in this area uh, that were prehistoric as well. I mean, there are lots of caverns. This creature of the Crosswick monster basically escaped through some caves. So who knows where it ended up? And we really won't know, you know, anything that happens until we find something. So to me, this story remains an enigma. Maybe never to be solved until someone either uncovers a skeleton of this creature or can disprove the eyewitness accounts of over 60 people. Now, either way, it adds to the mystery of this area, and I'm going to dress like the Crosswick monster this September at the Ren Fair. I am so excited. The Ren Fair is my husband and I go to it, and I can't wait to eat all of the macaroni and cheese and buy all of the cool stuff. Like... <laughs> Maybe maybe one day I'm going to dress like a knight, right? And 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 have my sword cuz I I have this giant sword and it's my favorite thing ever. So, either way, I cannot wait to go to the Ren Fair and I'd been to the Ren Fair before and I didn't even realize that it was the area of the Crosswick monster. So, now when I go this year, I'm going to be so excited. <laughs> Um, I would actually really love to find, I know one of the newspaper articles in the 50s showed an area with this giant sycamore tree. So now I want to go and like find this area and like track it down and like go find this cave that it supposedly went into. And also on a side note, some people theorize that the Crosswick monster escaped to these caves, but because of like the ground shifting and stuff, maybe it caved in and just trapped it or, you know, maybe it escaped through other caves. Uh, who's to know? So what are your thoughts, campers? Like, when it comes to this, do you think it could have been a prehistoric creature? Do you think it was a hoax? Do you think it was some kind of like Komodo dragon or, you know, it's hard to say, right? 
So I will say with it, with people thinking it's a hoax as well, I don't really think that the town really like did anything with this. So to me, it's like if, if they were using it as a hoax, what would have been the motive, right? They didn't really get anything out of it. There was no real gain that they got from making this up. So I personally think that it was some kind of creature. So you have these mounds, you have these prehistoric civilizations, you've got this great serpent mound, and then you've got this crazy sighting of this dinosaur-like creature, right? Um, but that's also why I said it's going to be hard to prove anything until you find a skeleton of this creature or until you can disprove these people. So I guess my question is, yeah, what do you guys think? I'll make sure to put like a little poll <laughs> on the YouTube video and on Spotify for you guys to vote and tell me what you think. Uh, or you can leave a comment down below on the post and let me know exactly what your thoughts are. Or if you know there are other sightings like this all across the country when it comes to kind of like prehistoric creatures. And I'll have to post some of those because I think there was one in like Arizona where it was like almost they called it like a dragon. So, uh, you know, think about it. If you have never even thought that like dinosaurs existed and then you see one and you're like, that's a that's a dragon. <laughs> that is straight up a dragon. Um, so yeah, I really, I really like the story of the Crosswick monster. And like I said, that was one that I absolutely had so much fun reading about and knowing that it happened like an hour away from where I live. I was like, yes, there are dinosaurs here. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. Granted, I don't want to come across one because it sounds like it was carnivorous. <laughs> so, um, and I'm like five, I'm like five, three on a good day. So that thing will snatch me right up. Right. But either way. I love dinosaurs. I love lizards. And I've, I've been living off of Godzilla the past like, oh gosh, it's so fun. So I'm just, I'm loving all this. I'm loving all these stories about like prehistoric dinosaurs still roaming and like hiding in places. But I guess while we're talking about dragons, um, when it comes to what I've been watching lately, I have been watching House of the Dragon. I, you know, here's the thing is I knew it was going to be sad because it is the dance of the dragons, right? But I am not prepared to see any of these dragons uh, die or anything. So <laughs> I'm like an emotional wreck lately when it comes to watching House of the Dragon, right? Like it's like I want to watch the story, but I'm also like sad when anything happens. And I have to keep telling myself, Erica, this is a made up story. Uh, dragons don't exist. This is literally they are CGI dragons. But somehow I still cry when something happens. So <laughs> So I don't know. I just I just like dragons and they're so sweet. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to also watch Long Legs. By the time this comes out, hopefully I will have seen it. But I am very excited because I know a lot of people have been talking about it. And I absolutely love Nicolas Cage. And I am very, very excited to get some good um, suspenseful horror in my life. Um, but yeah, other than that, I really haven't been watching too much. I really haven't had much time to like sit down and watch anything good. Uh, but House of the Dragon is one that I watch every Sunday. So I, I had to mention that, especially because this is kind of like um, a reptile lizard uh, dragon fest lately on Camp Cryptid. So <laughs> I'm not going to complain. So yeah, well, thanks everyone so much for listening to the story of the Crosswick Monster. I'm really excited. I have everyone on Patreon right now voting on the cryptid at the end of the month. I think on the 31st. Is that what day I'm doing it? Yeah, the 31st. Um, so right now the Fresno Nightcrawlers is winning. And I'm really excited because I know kind of vaguely the sightings of the Fresno Nightcrawlers, but I can't wait to get into it. And uh, it's going to be really fun. But yeah, other than that, I hope y'all are having a great week. And if you like what you're hearing, make sure to go leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, it makes my day to see your reviews and see what y'all think. And uh, Or you can go subscribe on YouTube. It's completely free, right? <laughs> and one of these days, I will be doing more video episodes. So that way you can be in the know about all of that. So yeah, I want to thank everyone so much again for listening to my lizard goodness going on. And it makes my day that you all enjoy these little fun little episodes. And hopefully soon I'll be having some guests on and start doing that. Like I said in uh, my Q&A episode, I really wanted to wait until I have all of my specifics set up with how I'm recording those episodes to make sure I have decent audio, right? Uh, so keep an eye out for those episodes. I'm really excited. But yeah, in the meantime, I want to thank everyone so much again for hanging out and listening. And I hope your Wednesday is going great so far and sending you love for the rest of the week. Get some good food in those bellies. And until next time, take care.